So you've got some kind of plan, right? Like uh, the, you have some kind of idea of a way that maybe people could get their money back or like what what is the overall, um, you know, idea that you have uh, going forward with Celsius? Um, yeah, so uh, I'm the person that tends to get called when things go wrong. Um, I've done that a few times. So a company I invested in, Kraken, was responsible for sorting out the, the Mount Gox um, fiasco in um, that's only just been sorted out and is still going. Um, and in 2016, we did the same when uh, Bitfinex was hacked for 119,000 Bitcoin. We put together a recovery plan. Um, and so we tried to do the same with Celsius when we realized that they were in trouble. Um, so we, uh, we spoke to, um, I spoke to Alex, I called him up and said, look, here's what we did with Bitfinex. Um, we uh, can put together a recovery plan for you. Um, it inv involves restructuring the company, doing some debt and equity, but you have to fess up, you have to say what the hole is, and you have to communicate effectively and execute a plan before the rumors um, and everything goes out of control. Um, so we, uh, we, we tried to do that, and that didn't work because there was no transparency on the size of the hole. Um, so we went to uh, strategy two, um, and we published all these strategies as well when we went public. Uh, strategy two was um, I went around all of the people that I knew could write a check for the amount that would be needed um, and got commitments for up to $6 billion um, in a bailout. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we presented that. We asked for transparency on the financials. We asked for more uh, regulatory clarity. Um, and uh, we weren't getting what we needed in order to implement a bailout. Um, at this stage, um, I went public realizing um, that there is probably um, a big hole and started telling people about that. And everyone told me that I'm FUD. Um, mm -hmm. I got massive attacks from it in every direction. Um, and I was telling them, this is going into bankruptcy. There is a hole. Um, and I was just trying to warn people of what was coming next. Um, and uh, on, prepared with that, we started to work on a bail-in structure. Um, and so we identified the three things that we think... Um, Celsius is, uh, it has problems with. Um, firstly, the leadership, it has to go. The brand has to go. Um, there's no, it's, it's beyond recovery now, and mm -hmm. everything came out during Chapter 11. Yep. Uh, secondly, um, they progressed from a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform to an, uh, an illegal securities business to an illegal fractional reserve bank without disclosing that over time. Um, so there's a bunch of licenses that you need in order to operate and open again. Um, and uh, third is the risk model. Um, you know, we, uh, you've got to simplify the risk model significantly um, and return back to what it originally was promised and take out all those under-collateralized loans where essentially retail were over-collateralized and hedge funds were under-collateralized. Um, and then it was really just a hedge fund where they were deciding uh, where the funds to go and misrepresenting people that this was a low-risk savings account when in, in, in fact it was... Uh, hugely risky. Um, so uh, we, we, we put together a strategy for how to do that. Um, and uh, where we are at right now is that uh, we believe that Celsius is going to have to shortly announce um, how, much everyone, how much everyone's going to be haircut for an offer um, and put together what they've called a crypto long strategy, which makes zero sense to me in terms of the numbers. Um, and so what we would like to do is um, take on a lot of the assets of the company um, and put it into a business that can continue um, and uh, do a bail-in, which is essentially make all of the creditors shareholders um, in a Bitcoin investment bank, which is a vision that we've been working on um, for a long time. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. Yeah, so so much to cover there. I mean, that's, that, that's a lot. Um, I, I guess... Let's let, let's start with this. Um, Alex Mashinsky, uh, it, it sounds like, in, in my opinion, based on everything you just said, that he's really the problem here, is that he has not been willing to go along with anything that made sense because I think he doesn't want to give up the image. He wants to think he can make a comeback. I, I think he thinks against all hope that somehow he's going to be able to salvage this. Uh, first question uh, would be, you know, do, do you agree with that? What do you think it's going to take for him to move on, and also, is what he did criminal? Uh, I'll leave that to the lawyers and the regulators to decide, but running an unlicensed business um, is not disclosing a whole is um, a criminal activity. Mm 
um, using client funds um, in ways that you weren't authorized to do that. Uh, that's a problem as well. Um, going and telling people to buy sell tokens while you're manipulating markets and selling tokens to those same people, that's a big problem. Um, and there's just a list and list and list of things that are a big, big, big problem. Um, telling, you know, the way that this was uh, represented, um, you know, lack of disclosures, um, a token that actually um, was registered as a security and then put on a, on a crypto exchange. Um, there's a big, big, big list of problems um, that, uh, that, that need to be figured out here. Um, the answer to the future is um, it depends if people lose a lot of money. Um, there's no recovery for Alex and Celsius from here at this stage because what he would have to do is firstly, he'd have to get regulators to approve that he can do this business. That's a big problem. Um, then you have to be fit and proper. And that means in, a reg in an application, you have to tick a bunch of boxes and prove that you haven't done any of these things. Um, that's a big problem. Um, so there is no return. But initially, he thought he could hide the hole and trade his way out of the hole, mm -hmm. um, which essentially would have, um, you know, would have returned to a bigger and bigger problem um, because the problem was just escalating and escalating. It's a, it's a typical, um, a typical degenerate gambling. You know, this is what you see from somebody that is at the casino at 4.30 a.m. who's lost all their money and they're down to their last $100 and they think they're going to be able to make up the 10000 they lost. Like, it's like gambler's fallacy is basically what he fell into, it sounds like. Uh, exactly that. And um, that's my perspective of what happened. Um, and he just kept trying to cover up a bigger hole and get himself deeper um, until eventually um, he had to just, uh, you know, and we're at the stage right now where I think he recognizes the seriousness of what's happened. Um, he must be getting all of the same messages that I'm getting of people that have committed suicide, um, people that have put their entire retirement savings into Celsius, uh, people that have literally lost everything. Um, and this is why it's so different from, like, say, the ICO boom and bust. You know, at least these were people that were trying to get rich quick and it failed. Yeah. Um, and uh, they start over. This is people that were duped into putting uh, their entire future into a platform that they were told um, was safer than a bank um, based upon, you know, what he called a $2 billion balance sheet, which was essentially sell token. Yeah, and, and that's what's really alarming is, you know, you look at the numbers, the balance sheet that was in this ridiculous stack of papers they sent me. Uh, you know, 600 million, I think, of uh, what they have is sell token, which is worthless. So, um, you know, I, I don't think anything can be done with that. Uh, let, let's go with, um, I got a couple more questions. Uh, let's talk about timeline, like maybe a realistic timeline for people who would be willing to receive a haircut or, you know, could potentially get money back. Because if we look at Mt. Gox, for instance, and we look at how long that has taken, everybody's saying, well, it's about to be over. We don't know that for sure. We don't know when they're dispersing those funds and how they're dispersing it. Uh, so who, that may go on for years too, but it, when, that's been, you know, what, 2014 is when it happened. Uh, so, you know, it's been eight years already. Is this situation going to be different because it's going to be handled in the United States? Uh, you know, what is a realistic timeline for people to be able to receive maybe some of their funds back? Yeah. So um, in the case of Mount Gox, it's eight years and it's still going. Um, that's because it was done through, and the, the Hail Mary for Mount Gox was that we managed to lobby and persuade them not to sell the Bitcoin. Uh, because of that, it came out of bankruptcy. But then every time someone sued them, when you're out of bankruptcy, you have to delay paying the creditors in order to resolve the legal case. Um, and so if that happens, if Celsius reopens again, um, then you can expect a similar thing. Um, so Celsius has to not reopen in order for this to be settled in a timely fashion is the current state of affairs. Uh, Bitfinex, it was resolved within a couple of weeks and then went on for nine months to make investors whole. Okay. Um, but when the case of um, Celsius, the current state of affairs is it's using Chapter 11. Now, Chapter 11 is an incredibly innovative uh, bankruptcy proceeding. If this was done, say, in the UK, where the holding company is, um, all of the assets would have been liquidated. It would have crashed the market further. Um, it would have exposed other insolvent businesses. Um, and it would have hit some of those DeFi um, liquidation points. So um, that's what was the most important to be avoided. And it would have resulted in people receiving a much, much bigger haircut on the funds. 
Um, so where is it now? Well, um, it's moved into chapter 11, um, but um, the lawyers that are representing Alex and Celsius negotiated a 120 days exclusivity period mm. on recovery plans. And what that is for, from my perspective, is a save Alex, save Celsius, reduce as many liabilities as possible um, by um, introducing a haircut and a settlement um, whereby as many people sign up not to sue um, them by se uh, settling those funds um, and an offer will be made uh, while they say we've got this amazing mining operation that's going to save everybody <laughs> um, and uh, try and buy some time. Uh, what that means is that anyone that's got a recovery plan for us we have to put it to the investment bank that Celsius is engaged, and then the Celsius board have to sign off on those plans. And they'll be analyzing those plans in terms of legal protections, not necessarily um, what's best for depositors. So that has to go on for 120 days. Um, if in the meantime, um, there are lots of lawsuits and lots of um, various other things, then the board could be removed with, and then with the decisions would be over to the creditors committee. Um, and a different board. If over to the creditors committee, um, then the, the community can crowdsource lots of different recovery plans, submit those recovery plans. Um, and then if they can get out within a time frame, a realistic plan, they get signed off by the court. But the key thing with signing off by the court is proving that there is a compliant model in order to execute this. So that's why uh, we've been submitting that. So right now we have to go via Celsius, they get their 120 days. Um, and then it depends what happens with Alex and the board. Um, and, uh, you know, the legal counsel are essentially putting together lots of strategies um, to do what they're engaged to do, which is to do what's best for Celsius, not necessarily what's best for uh, your deposits. And the mountain and plethora of uh, lawsuits that are coming through. You had, um, I had 13 more delivered through uh, my post the other day, uh, yesterday. Um, and if you're signed up to that site, they're just coming in fast and furious at the moment. Um, and you've got regulators as well um, that are looking to do that. So um, that's really the current situation. Um, what we would be doing is saying, well, Celsius, you say what your plan is. Um, and then what we would look to do is um, get support around how we can do something on top of that um, to make depositors slightly more whole. Um, by using a bail-in structure where people get equity in something that may have a future on top of whatever Celsius offers uh, and their numbers. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's once again, that's a lot. Um, I, I guess, so what is, I think it all sounds good, if, you know, to do that. Uh, what does it take to, like, we got to run quick because we've gone a little over time here. Just two, two quick questions. Uh, and then we'll have to wrap it up, uh, you know, maybe have you back on uh, in the future because it's been super interesting for me personally uh, to know what, what you've been talking about. But number one, what does it take to force Alex Mashinsky out? And then the second thing would be what actionable steps uh, can the audience, my audience do in order to support you or, or, or support, you know, getting rid of Alex, whatever it might be. What's, are there actionable steps that Celsius users, my audience can do? or take? So those would be two questions. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So um, to get um, Alex out, um, uh, essentially, um, you, it would have to be proven in court that he's not working in the best interests of depositors, and that having him there is hindering the process. So take with that what you wish. Um, but uh, people are doing all sorts of things um, in order to try and, um, you know, do, to, to prove that um, that may be happening or may not be happening. Um, but there's a strategy whether he's there or not. At the moment, everything's being scrutinized. Chapter 11 is a, is a good process, uh, but he's also they've also got the best lawyers representing them right. um, that are the best in the world at this, um, spending our money um, as well. Um, and uh, so that's what people, um, in terms of three actions, um, I'm giving a lot of updates in real time on my Twitter account, at Simon Dixon Twit, T-W-I-T-T. I'll pull it um, I'm too. uploading videos every single day where I'm answering people's questions on Spaces and AMA on my YouTube channel, Simon Dixon. And we put together a web page, which is banktothefuture.com forward slash Celsius, um, where you can state your, what your claim is, um, you know, and you can put together your ideas of proposals um, so that we can put you in the right groups um, where people are working on that. So if you're doing coordinated 
you know, lawsuits or coordinated re um, recovery plans. Um, those those uh, are all being due. We're just focused on solutions right now. The problems are well understood. Um, go through the videos that I've uploaded every single day and you'll understand all the problems. Um, now we've just got to focus at solutions and move forward.